Okay, welcome to the Earplay Studio. Today we're going to be recording some guitar and some bass. Um, from lesson three, we did some drums, um, of course, virtual instrument. Um, today, we're going to be focused on um, recording using audio files, um, live instruments like the guitar and bass. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, configuring the um, session, um, memory location, and all that stuff right after the recording. So we're just going to go right into recording, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's being done. Okay? <laughs> recorded drums to an instrument track, of course virtual instrument. We've recorded the bass guitar to an audio track and um, the guitar to an audio track. All right, we're going to take a little look at the transport. We just want to see what makes this session work. All right, we're going to look at various things in the session and of course we're going to talk about mixing, EQs and all of that stuff in upcoming lessons. But for today, we're going to take a look at our transport and what the function of all these buttons in the transport. All right. If we take a look over here, we're going to notice six buttons. The first button is called Zoom Toggle. All right. If we select a track, let's select the drum track and click on the Zoom Toggle button. It's going to zoom your track into a default um, zoom. Of course, you can change this in your preferences. All right, so if I go ahead and select another track and hit zoom toggle, the same will apply for your audio track. All right, now the next one is called tab to transients. All right, if we take a look at our audio track or even our MIDI track, we have these notes. For the MIDI track, we have notes, and for the audio track, we have transients, right? So it's literally going to go from one transient to the next without me have to be clicking on it. So if I select tab to transient and I simply press the tab key, it will do the job for me. See, the, just going right from one transient to the next. Very convenient. Okay, so we can deselect that. If we do the same thing for the MIDI, MIDI track, we select tab to transient. We Press the tab button, is gonna tab over to each um, note within the MIDI track. All right, there we go. Next, we have our mirror MIDI editing. All right, this is quite important, especially when you're looping and you want 
um, you're making edits to one loop and you want the corresponding loops to change with what you're editing. For instance, let's hit um, zoom toggle. And there's a note here. Let's, let's play this. All right. What if we selected this note here? We're going to double click and we can select. There you have it. We deleted that note. No. If we select the mirror MIDI editing, right? And we did that same. Let's undo what we just did. So we can go ahead and delete it again. All right, let's take a look at that MIDI note. Let's, so that's a note. So we select the note and we're gonna delete the note. If we go back to our edit window here, that note is deleted in all of our, um, our, our selections, our loop selections, all right? So it mirrors exactly what you do in the first one. You'll do it in all of them. Very con convenient. All right, so we just undo that and deselect, as well as deselect our, our zoom toggle. All right, all right. Now we're gonna move on to the next. I like this button. It li links your timeline to the edit selection. All right. Uh, oftentimes I wanna kind of listen to a particular era. So for for instance, I wanna listen to this particular particular section of the song, right? So I'm going to play it. All right, but there's another part of the song I want to take a listen to, but if I select, if you notice, that one is deselected for me to select somewhere else in the song. Now, this can we can fix that easily. We just deselect this button, the the link timeline to edit selection. And now we can select somewhere else on the song. So we can still play the original selection as well as we can now play this tiny little selection here by hitting Command or in Windows, Control, left arrow button. All right. So we have our left arrow and Command. So, and of course, space bar as usual to play the original very convenient all right but i like to keep this selected because generally i want to keep both nicely linked so we just select that one all right the next one we have here another very important one we're going to link the track and our edit selection all right if we deselect um this button if I look here on my track here and I select, say I select piano, right? I selected piano. If you notice, our selection on the drums remain, all right? That can be useful if we're doing, say we're selecting multiple tracks and we want to, say, um, zoom into that one alone. Or we, we want to do, you'll find uh, all the uses for that as you start using Pro Tools more and more. And um, you find that you're going to want to, um, select that sometimes and you're going to want to unlink it. Let me show you a, a situation where you're going to need it. So if I link the track and edit selection, say I want to select all of these without have to select that, then shift and select. All I have to do is just simply link them and hold shift down and select um, from the drums to the bass. I want to select all that. And if you notice within the track, within the edit section, it's also selected absolutely convenient wow it's it's excellent i love that feature all right so we can deselect that and we can go ahead and still make selections with that other selection um selected all right so that's our link selection button thank you so much for watching remember to email me at the perfect 10 course at gmail.com See you soon.